Okay. Here. We are starting for the next part of the pre moon session. Um, our dear friends and partners from Rarefied are supporting our association and everything we are doing already since the past year, since the very beginning actually. Um, and Rarefied was also constantly supporting these events, all other events um, we are doing from really the very beginning. And now it's the third year in a row that Rarefied is sending a speaker and this year it's again the this year it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and this year again, it's the CEO from, from Rarebyte, or one of the co-founders. Um, you can find like, other co-founder also somewhere in Graz, probably. <laughs> somewhere. Probably somewhere here. Um, so a very w warm welcome to our dear friend Rainer Angermann from Rarebyte. Yeah. Thank you very much for the kind words and the introduction. So my name is Rainer Angemann, co-founder of uh, Rarebyte. Um, we are an Austrian studio. Um, we have offices here in Graz and in Vienna. And at Rarebyte, um, since uh, we founded the company in 2006, we've been doing a lot of different projects actually, ranging from event games to uh, online games to mobile games to our own IPs such as Seeds of Soul um, and some other IPs. And for us, it's split that we do contract work and our own piece. And today, um, I'm going to talk about one of our collaboration projects. Um, and it's a Game Dev Tycoon for mobile. So this is going to be a short kind of post-mortem, a very, very short one. Um, and I want to tell you some things, uh, what went right in this project, what went wrong, and also some analysis of how our launch went on mobile. And just to give you an overview, um, maybe a quick question, who in here knows Game Dev Tycoon already? Yeah, um, okay, a lot of people. <laughs> so um, for those who don't know it, uh, it's a business simulation. Um, you actually uh, build your own game studio within the game. You start in a garage, then you get into a bigger office, hire employees, and do you, you basically do the whole game business in the game as a simulation. Um, I like to quickly run our trader here. Quick trailer. Um, what you basically do in the game, you you make the right decisions to like improve your games and, uh, and build whole um, business uh, around the, those those games. And what we did, um, so the original uh, version for version for Game Dev Tycoon was released uh, five years ago on Steam. So actually, this is like two days ago was the fifth anniversary for Game Dev Tycoon on Steam. This was the original version, and what we did is take the original version, which was written in um, JavaScript and web technology, um, and just use this code base as a reference, and then uh, we completely rebuilt this game in Unity and C Sharp. And it took us quite some time, over 3,000 hours to do that. It's a very complex and 
um, yeah, content rich game. Um, and overall, it took us 18 months to get there since the first line was written. And seven developers contributed, yeah, a lot of stuff to this project. And yeah, holy cow. Well, um, first, I'd like to talk about what went wrong with that port or that new version of Game Life Tycoon. And yeah, let's talk about this. Um, I just picked out the most important things uh, that I want to tell you today. There's probably more, but I want to start with this uh, and it's the iPhone 10. And the problem here was when we released the game on iOS, um, which was uh, end of November last year, it was about the same time when the iPhone 10 came out. And the problem was um, the game was already in submission and everything was set up for release and then it hit the stores and people were playing it on the iPhone 10, which was also brand new, and we did not have a test device for the iPhone 10. and then some things went terribly wrong. There were some crashes and stuff that we, we, couldn't just, we couldn't test it because it wasn't running on a simulator, and we did not have a device. And there was also this kind of yeah, infamous notch thing there um, we had to take care of. And it, it took us about yeah, one to two weeks after release to finally you know, get rid of all the bugs uh, and make the experience better for those users. So that's something that did not go well. Um, next, launch day issues. So when we made the game and we finished the game and everything was set up to be launched, we just said, okay, um, that's basically it. We, game of the Coon is ready. We're gonna release this. We're gonna you know, lean back and have a drink and watch sales. Um, and it wasn't li uh, like that because um, when you launch a game on the Apple App Store, there's, um, you can set the time when this thing should go live. And we set that about one or two hours before um, our whole Bristol release thing was gonna be released. Um, and this wasn't, this, the time frame there was too short. So from our previous experiences, we, we knew I, or we, we, we thought that, that we knew that this is going to take yeah, one hour maximum. But um, yeah, nowadays it takes longer to, for, uh, for Apple to process this. And it actually took about 8 to 12 hours. And the problem was all the new stores were there. The link to the store was there in all those stores. People were clicking on that link and it didn't work. And this, this was really a bad experience. Of course, it fixed itself over the next couple of hours after release. But still, it was a nightmare on, on launch day. Um, there were some couple. There were a couple of things that also went wrong. Um, we went over budget with the project, and the project took a little bit longer than expected. Although, in hindsight, actually, uh, it was really needed uh, for the project to do turn out to be what it is. So yeah, it's game that you can predict everything. We went a little over budget. Um, then we had some third-party issues with like um, assets from the asset store that broke mid-development, which wasn't fun either. And we had some localization issues, like for, for example, with Arabic. Like we put like a week into that. Uh, it's still not in the game yet um, because in the end we, we kind of discovered, oh, um, all the rendering is there and it's working, but the translations are just not good enough. Um, so it's still not in the game. Yeah, uh, let's see. Well, next, uh, I want to quickly talk about what went right. And there were a couple of things that went right, fortunately. Uh, first, um, I want to point out like this partnership that, or collaboration that we have with, with Greenheart Games. In this case, Greenheart Games, who did the original version, um, was our publisher, although they are a developer themselves. And that helped a lot because this, uh, this game, Game Left Tycoon, was their first game. And they really do care a lot about this game. Um, and there's, there's like a healthy relationship there between the publisher, who is also a developer, and us as a developer. And this is something that, that is still a good match, I think. Also, creating a new UI or look for the game. So the original version, uh, it was more of a bare-bones UI thing uh, going on in the PC version. And we took that also as kind of a reference. And then we developed a whole new, uh, more mobile-friendly and more casual UI that would attract more players on mobiles. Um, we did a lot of, yeah, 
this just took a lot of iterations is probably the cause for like uh, the fact that we it took longer than expected but in the end it turned out to be a good thing um, one thing to mention here is, is also that it was some parts of that were easy because we know where we are what we were heading for because all the features were there so we knew okay we need this and that this is an example for the game concept screen where you just start creating your game on the left side this is a um, UI mockup from from the first month of development um, on the right side that's probably right before release so you can see there's nothing uh, not that much being changed so that yeah just put it yeah, as a good example we, we um, yeah it's turned out to be good um, and also the version was more than a port it wasn't just the original version on mobile but it had uh, a hardcore pirate mode where you could, this is something for the hardcore players, they, um, they could play the game in a mode where uh, pirates were actually stealing their games and they had to fight against this in the game. We also put more uh, uh, content into that, uh, for example we added an invento swap, we could probably guess what this is. Uh, into the game. We also did a lot of graphics improvements and, and items and, and overall theming of the game and this also helped uh, in PR and marketing of the game. Um, yeah, just a quick overview like the comparison between the Steam version who is, uh, which is still uh, in the top 100 of best rated Steam ga games of all time uh, and on mobile we reached 89% uh, Metacritic on iOS and you mentioned as one of the best iOS games in 2017, which was great. Um, and we also uh, have a solid 4.9 out of 5 rating on both um, iOS and uh, the Google Play Store. Well, let's quickly talk about um, how the marketing was done for the game, because this was also crucial for us um, as, a, as the developers. So, we just supported Greenheart um, with all the different screenshots and marketing materials that was, was actually needed. A lot of the marketing thing was done by Greenheart themselves and they also hired a company to help them. So there was a PR agency involved. Um, and we, overall we managed to get to all those big news sites like Touchicate. Um, yeah, I just mentioned it before, um, Metacritic um, ratings were very good. Um, and most importantly, um, we got the uh, best feature on the iOS uh, App Store, which is the Game of the Day feature. So that's actually, that's the thing you're aiming for as an iOS developer. Um, that's the thing that drives the most sales. And we had multiple Game of the Day features, and most importantly, the US App Store Game of the Day feature. Uh, we'll see later um, how this turns out in sales. Yeah, this is just a quick overview. Um, they, ha they hired a company to help with PR, which is also a good idea to do if, we, if you're doing, uh, like um, releasing a game yourself without a publisher or like, um, yeah. Um, yeah, and press releases were done um, and the coverage was very good about this game. But there were also issues um, and this is one of the things I just wanted to point out. When we hit the Google Play Store, uh, which was uh, roughly one and a half month after um, the uh, iOS release. There, yeah, people were actually buying the game and were writing a lot of good reviews, which in the first place is a good thing. But then uh, Google decided, well, mm, something is wrong with those reviews and they deleted 77% of our positive reviews. It was like we were getting five to six hundred new reviews a day with five stars and Google probably deleted yeah 500 or 400 to 500 a day and still to this day we do not know the exact reason why this happened. Um, eventually he stopped doing it um, and we were just we kind of like trying to get featured in the store um, and it took a long time and if you take now a look at this sales chart um, you can see the Google Play feature there. It was released at the end of January and the Google Play feature just happened to be somewhere yeah, in, in July. Um, it took a long time and compared to um, the game of the day feature and the, or all the big features from Apple 
which were like four days after iOS release, it was a bit disappointing in sales. So you could see um, like the overall units we have on iOS is uh, 140K and um, Google Play is uh, 85K. And yeah, you can basically see how the sales went. Uh, and you can also see that when we, uh, when we got live on the Google Play Store, there's also a spike uh, uh, in the Apple sales. And also when the Google Play feature was finally done, there's also a little spike there. Uh, overall, um, we're actually satisfied with the baseline of the game and I think there's still more um, to be done with this game. Um, but yeah, this I think we're running out of time. This was, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, this was just a quick overview and a quick postmortem. Um, I'll be available for questions. Either if we have some more seconds to maybe ask some questions or ask some questions now or afterwards. Thank you very much. While we're setting up for the next speaker, um, we can already chime on the stage. Um, we have time for one more question, maybe. Um, Thank you. Just one quick question. How did you manage to get the Game of oh, game of Today feature? Is there anything you could do or is that just luck? It's magic. Yeah. Um, no, it's, yeah. it's actually, um, it's a bit easier these days because um, there's, there's actually an official address you can write to for like, I want my game to be featured in a way and then they would just review that. But the, uh, what you need to do is to prepare a marketing deck of your game. So like, just like a pitching deck, but pointing out what the game is about, uh, what, why would players be interested in that, and then send that to Apple. And it works in a way that it is, uh, there's some sort of pre-filtering to that and they would then, uh, if, if they think it's interesting, then it would be forwarded internally to an editor to, um, yeah, and this editor would probably decide, uh, then decide to, uh, to feature that game. But you can't contact them directly. Um, but you have to prepare a marketing deck, basically, and point out all the important stuff. Yeah. All right.